There we go. So, Net Gem, uh, where we had said this was going to take place uh, is in the evening, as everyone else has finished with the drinking competition. People are talking, laughing, doing this and that. Uh, you know, people are claiming their prizes, all the good things. Uh, and you're kind of left in this moment of peace as the this uh, impromptu festival, essentially, uh, is going along in the town. Uh, Quail is not far away, uh, sitting by the hot springs, uh, kind of playing some music quietly on his lute, uh, just to add to the atmosphere. What would you like to do? Um, I guess just kind of quietly go and sit next to him and just kind of watch. I guess people watch all the people who are probably blasted in this tavern. Just like... <laughs> Doing their thing, acting like drunk people. Yeah. Yeah, you you two sit together for a while. Uh, Quail gives you, you know, like, the head nod greeting uh, as he continues playing. Uh, and you two just enjoy each other's company for a little bit. People watching as everyone in this town center is, you know... Purchasing snacks from vendors and passing around alcohol and a second round of the drinking competition goes up for those who watch the first and want to participate now. Uh, and after a little bit, uh, Quail kind of lowers the volume of his playing a bit. Still keeps going, uh, but at a more manageable volume so that you can hear him over it. And says, this isn't too overwhelming for you, is it? Uh, I can compartmentalize enough to deal with this. If I just focus on what's there, it's not too bad. Fair enough. It's... You know, parts of it certainly remind me of some of the nicer nights at the compound with the band, but there's definitely less of a, an oppressive air here, I have to say. No offense, of course. <laughs> you know I wouldn't take any. You know how it is. That's fair. We've talked a little bit about all of that, and of course there's no pressure for you to say anything in particular, but where where are you at with all of that? What do you think? With all of what, specifically? Ooh. I don't know, the band in general, uh, some of the things you guys have been saying, and I mean, I know I'm not in the know about everything, but at least from an outside perspective, you seem hesitant about a lot of those things. Yeah, it's, I think being able to be in our moth has been it's opened my eyes a lot more to other opportunities I I feel like I missed out on by thinking that being a member of the band was the only way to really do anything I guess um Anything I considered to be, I guess, making some kind of difference. Mm. 
Well, you're... I mean... I wasn't there for all of it, but at least for the little bit I was there for. You made a, a difference with the band, though I agree that our moth and the things you, that everyone has been doing has been a lot more impactful, and I think we see the, the positive outcome a lot more. You know, with what we've been doing in our moth. With the Thorn Band, it was a lot of get rid of the problem and then leave, and you don't really get to see the healing or how it helps. But. I th we I think... healed anything in the first place. Well, I mean, I wasn't with you guys, like I said, but I know at least. In my situation, I was saved and stuff, and that certainly helped me out of bad situation, but I can't speak for everything. I wasn't a member, so you have a much more comprehensive perspective, I think. Uh, maybe. It's... I think while, like, it's it's hard because I think the band was good for helping sometimes um, because I think in a lot of instances putting the right amount of that kind of muscle uh, with everyone's oaths and everything behind certain issues was what we needed, but at the same time I feel like I feel like it wasn't like like you said, it feels a lot more impactful to directly do things for our moth and traveling here and like helping people directly but there are just some things I've learned about things that I personally experienced and that the band has done that make me think that maybe it I don't know how worth it it really is to have me dedicate my life doing that when it it feels like it's trying to do the impossible like we're supposed to stand up against things like the woman that appeared in our dreams and killed Esmond And I don't think that's something that really anyone can do in my station, at least. No, I agree. It's... It certainly seems like an impossible task to handle what, what you all told me about, um... If I, obviously, say the dread specifically, we don't know what her goal is, what she does in the day to day. If she kills people like that willy nilly, so it's hard to know what to do against that kind of person or power. So I guess all we little people can do is try. I'm not saying the Thorn Band is right, but I, I can understand why they would try to fight against someone like her. Of course, I just question if 
that kind of thing is what I want to... If that kind of thing is what I want to dedicate my life to, because if I'm going to be chasing dragons, so to speak, I am have to be prepared to deal with the consequences of that. If I'm punching above my weight class, so to speak, against these types of things, then I've been lucky once before. Who's to say it's going to happen again? I guess it's a question of, if not us, then who? You know? Maybe the farm band is going about it the wrong way, but... Surely someone has to try and go against those kind of things. And there's a lot of them. It's my case at this point. Yeah. Well, at least they don't all seem unified or whatever. I think that'd be a lot worse if we had to deal with more than one at once. Who being unified? Sorry. These Desico, whatever. Oh. Yeah, I don't... I guess not. I feel like if they really wanted things to stick more, we probably would have seen more people come after Esmond or the rest of us, maybe. I guess, you know, I was, I, I wasn't there. I didn't see her and I was really only filled in by you guys. She showed up. Did she attack all of you, or, or just Esmond? Um, all of us. Mm -hmm. Was she trying to kill all of you? Or was the killing aspect an accident, or was it targeted, or...? I have no idea. I believe what she'd said she'd wanted was, or I think her goal was to find information out from one of us. I don't know if she'd gotten what she'd wanted, or if killing Esmond was some kind of accident, or... I don't know, but I guess if she'd wanted all of us dead, it probably would have just happened. Esmond being collateral may have just been an accident or just a side effect, I guess. Do you think Like, I, I know that Esmond was brought back because of the, excuse me, connection with the call, but do you think she hunted you guys down because of the call, or was it an accident that she came across you guys, or, I don't know, sorry, I'm asking a lot of questions. No, you're, you're okay. Um... I'm not sure I know the answer, specifically, considering uh, it was pretty much just that and what Nemesis told me, considering she kind of appeared in a dream to him after the fact, but hmm. it seemed intentional towards us. I'm not sure if it was in regards to the call or something else one of us had experienced or because I distinctly remember her trying to rifle around in my head at least 
and I would assume similar to everyone else. So, I suppose that would include the call, if that indeed was what she was looking for. So she was looking for something, and we don't know if she found it or not, right? Yeah. As far as we know, I think. But I don't think she would necessarily be the type to do a victory lap or something like that if she did in fact find what she wanted. Yeah. I mean, for somebody who's apparently supposed to be nightmarish, she seemed dramatic when she showed up, but then kind of just left abruptly. Doesn't seem to have a lot of uh, performer's flair to forget the joke there. I mean, I I get it, considering she's uh, trying to instill dread, I suppose, would be her calling, more or less. She doesn't need to do any kind of theatrics if she's just going to show up, kill someone, and leave. Because now we know the next time she shows up, it's probably going to be serious. Do you think she will show up again? I mean, I guess it depends what she was looking for. If it was just some piece of information one of us happened to be holding on to that led to someone else, then I don't think she would need to. But if it was something about one of us, then I'd assume she'd come back to finish the job. Yeah. Sorry, it's easier to think about this than, you know, the situation we're currently in, but it seems like we don't really have enough to figure out what she's thinking. Do you think she's... Well, I mean, obviously, she killed Esmond. She's not a good person. But do you think she's, like... Evil? Evil? I'm, like, I don't know what to think. Because, I mean, you've killed I... people. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think there's... To live in the world that we live in, you kind of have to do things to survive. Not always because they're the right thing to do, I guess. But that doesn't mean you can't make good choices and try to minimize the amount of harm you do. But I guess it depends on what her goal was with that. Because it easily could have just been uh, if I'm gonna assume she's pretty powerful based on everything, so it could have just been her squashing some ants and not realizing it. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> ants. Uh... I mean, she did call us mice, so that might have been a little bit more of an apt <laughs> gnomer in this case, but... You know what's striking is very mouse-like. Pretty big mouse. Yeah. If he does pop up again. Um, I'm assuming she's just going to kind of expect us to fall in line and not interfere, I guess, or some kind of fear of whatever happened to Esmond. But... Hmm. I suppose if that's what she wants, I'm... If 
I have to go back to the band if they call me back anytime soon, which could be at any point, I suppose. I mean, I'm kind of dead regardless, so. I don't think you're dead. I think. I genuinely think it's a miracle I've lasted this long. Especially considering this, and she kind of gestures to the whole massive scar eyeball thing. I hope this isn't too presumptuous of me, but with with your permission, can I pull a tail from you? Sure. I don't... It's a... <laughs> it's a... It's a ghost thing I can do, but... I don't want to... Go ahead, I suppose. <laughs> For sure, but... I trust you. He kind of, you know, a bit abruptly ends the song he was idly strumming, and then, like, turns to sit crisscross and face you instead uh, and begins uh, a new tune something low and mournful and his eyebrows kind of scrunch together as he concentrates he, he's like looking in your direction but with that gaze of somebody who's like looking past you to the horizon um and this song slowly starts to take form that's slow and at times mournful and other times more gentle uh, and as you just kind of let yourself absorb this new song you haven't heard before you find in your mind's eye uh, that you start to see something you remember running through woods you remember following behind somebody, listening to shout instructions, panicked breath in your chest as you try to prepare yourself for something very important that you've never done before. You remember coming to a stop, you know, being directed to bend down low as the two of you watch from a distance. You remember somebody very tall reacting in fear to this glowing figure. You remember Marl taking aggressive actions against this figure, charging, using their abilities. And you remember the glowing figure watching, just letting Marl go at it. And then with a wave of their hand, Marl is dead. And that that drive fills you, that drive to protect, to fight, and you you try to follow it, you try to follow your teachings. And this glowing figure looks upon you and tells you to run. You lose your eye and you run. You don't often remember running away. That moment was kind of all a blur in the fear and pain of what happened. But now you do remember it. You remember the impact of your boots on the ground, of the metal of your armor digging into your skin at all your joints. You trying to get in between trees even as your vision is impaired and the pain is making it difficult to focus on anything at all you remember running and running and running but somehow you never fall you never run face first into a tree you never trip over a root somehow you make it through these deep and treacherous woods. Stop it. Stop. 
And at the time, you thought maybe it was just your memory. Maybe it was your magic. You don't know. But now, now you do recall. At first, you think maybe it's the dog that's guiding you. You think maybe he's directing you where to run. But no, the touch that you felt at that time to duck in between trees, somebody who catches you by the back of your armor when you're about to trip and helps you keep on going. It was a hand. It wasn't a dog. It was light. And it was someone who felt very guilty, but did what had to be done and made sure that you got away. Somebody guided you all the way back until when that touch finally faded and for the first time you truly stumbled, different arms caught you. And you remember an older tiefling bent over you, yelling in confusion, asking you what happened. Other paladins gathering around you, trying to question you even as you fall unconscious from the pain, finally. And as you kind of come back to yourself, Quail brings the song to a close as he finishes uh, one of his tales from beyond. Normally that would have like a magical effect that allows you to teleport, but you're not going to be teleporting right now, so... <laughs> Wait, I'm already gone. I'm in the woods, boys. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I've left. Goodbye, everyone. He... Uh, sang a tale of the runaway to you, which would normally let you use your reaction to teleport up to 30 feet. But... <laughs> oh, hell yeah. But, uh, you, you don't need to do that right now, unless you are teleporting. In which case, go off. <laughs> I don't think I have anywhere to teleport to, so that's fine. <laughs> uh... Quail kind of finishes it and sits there for a moment. I... I don't know what you might have seen, but you certainly felt your fear. I'm sorry that you had to go through that. More or less what I signed up for, so. It may have been what you signed up for, but did you really understand the depth of it when you did agree to it way back when? Not at all. And that's what gets me, I think. I don't think if I'd had the same knowledge I did now, and if I knew I had any other kind of option. I don't know if I would have made the same choice. Is the thing. Fair. I mean, we're we're going to this wedding and I'm still honestly not sure how to uh feel about meeting these people but I mean didn't they mention that they had something going on currently with the thorn band what what yes. do you think you'll do if you see any of them excellent question I'm going to hope, first off, that we don't, um, you know, run into any of them. It 
so you're just gonna hope. I don't think there's anything else I really can do. If we run into them, then I will deal with it to the best of my ability as I can. Despite knowing the possible issues that might come up as a result. Mm -hmm. I mean, they can't all be horrible, right? Some of them have to have a similar approach that you do. Or, or, I mean, Wolf does, or... He's not really a member, is the thing. And I'm certainly not the pinnacle of members, I suppose. My concern is that if it really is an issue, there's a good chance that they're going to put more of their trusted people on it. And if we run into them, I'm worried about... What, like Coral? Nemesis. Yeah. I don't really think they no. would be too happy. Now that would be a meeting, Coral and Nemesis. God. <laughs> I, yeah. I, from a personality standpoint, Definitely not. I don't think it would go well. But even more from a standpoint of... Things I've personally noticed that I would hope he would know well enough not to bring to any sort of attention in the presence of true members of the Thorn Band. one can hope do do you know yet has he talked to you about it what I don't know it's not my place but it it might be good to talk to Nemesis about some of your concerns and whatnot. I don't know. I think the less I say about it, the safer both of us are. Maybe. I just don't want to step into any pitfalls that leads to me having to do things I don't want to and other people having to see me do things I don't want to. And I guess would you rather always live wordless about these things or would you rather find an approach that lets you handle things the way you would actually want to. Well, certainly the latter, but that's the problem, isn't it? What, finding someone? Who... Finding a way to do things that in a way that I want because I think that doesn't necessarily align with how the band dictates that I should do things. Which, having to do anything that would go against that would lead me to have to do... Well, have to find alternative to... So 
So from my... Bye. Go ahead. Nope, listen. It. So from my understanding of things, the the Thorn Band gets the power of their of of, of the oath they have you all take from an ancestor, right? And if I understand right, that ancestor is a Desico. Correct. So you, what, have to find a, a different Desico? I believe so. Hmm. But I think it also has to be strong enough to be able to override what we have currently. Because if I just break the oath, I don't know what happens there. Best case scenario, the thorn band comes and hunts me down. Worst case scenario, I don't know. I don't know what they have built in to deal with someone breaking the oath. If anything. I could die just outright, so... Well... We don't want you to die. Um, this seems like a seems like a bad idea, considering uh, part of the reason I want to leave is so I don't die. I mean, how? Maybe, maybe you could ask Wolf who who broke hers, right? I the issue with that is more just that's gonna be a bit of a while out unless I just sent her a letter which I mean would be slightly faster but also that would mean that whoever broke her oath would have to get to me somehow and I don't really know how that works logistically I mean the dread just showed up and peaced out didn't she yeah but I kind of feel like he's a little bit of an echelon above a lot of the Desico just based on what she had going on and just kind of how she played a lot of that she didn't feel like she had anything to prove necessarily is how it felt to me so Fair. I mean do we know of any others where to find any others I am currently not allowed to and have purposely been dodging trying any possible leads that I may have considering I mean I you know totally in keeping with your oath you you don't know anything about what I could be capable of asking the spirits. It would be crazy if I asked them to look for something. Yeah. I definitely would not be able to... It would not interfere with anything I can think of because I have no way to stop you from asking the spirits. I mean, would you want in on that or would you want me to just look by myself to see if I can find anything. I think it's worth a try, considering. Because even if I do break the oath and I'm just left as I am, um, some kind of source of divine power would make things a lot easier, considering it's kind of saved me and my the rest of us here a couple times over at this point so I'd like to maintain that if I can yeah hmm. he seems but to the possibility of hurting people because of other interferences isn't great so So, someone who wouldn't 
force you to hunt other Desico and possibly hurt your own friends and stuff. That's ideal, yes. Hunting other Desico, I mean, if they deserve it, then I mean, sure. But okay, okay. So someone Thorn less Band's black kind of and white. Blanket. Yeah, Thornbane's kind of like a blanket of Desico, anti Desico. But I think, from my standpoint of being someone from the Thorn Band who isn't like other people from the Thorn Band necessarily, um, the same kind of black and white thinking I don't think is conducive. He doesn't really say much, he just kind of seems to pluck at his loot for a moment. And you can almost see the air shift around him in a way you've seen a couple of other times, you know, when, when you're aware that he's communing with spirits. Uh, sometimes you're able to see them more intensely. Other times, you know, you just see moments that make you think your eyes are maybe fooling you, but there's a shifting and you for once you can hear the whispers that usually only quail can hear. And the voices all seem to layer together. And it's it's so difficult to discern any specific word to pick something out that's being said, though the quail is listening very intently. And these whispers continue for a while, and you start to get impressions. You, these different ghosts and spirits relating short stories about something strange they saw that might be a desk or something, some odd power, some powerful person showed up. They're telling all these stories and Quail seems to be rapidly sorting through them as he just listens. And then one of the stories in particular stands out to you. It speaks of a person in a long coat who showed up and saved someone who was dying. Someone who was about to take their last breath. This person showed up and seemingly with a wave of their hand sewed shut a ripped open throat, brought this person's blood back within them and saved their life and then disappeared. And then another story comes of somebody else who showed up and performed a great act that saved a child and you start to hear stories of powerful beings. It's hard to draw a connecting line between them to see if any of them are talking about the same person or same event even. Until eventually Quail stops playing and kind of sets down his loot as if to think and absorb. So I think within the parameters of what we're looking for someone who is potentially powerful enough to break this or at least might know how to I think I think I heard of three I heard a story of somebody offering somebody else that kind of power the, the, the kind of power you have you know where you have have an oath that's less to a person and more to ideals um, so I heard a story about that person offering somebody an oath like that. So that's one option. Um, I heard about somebody else who apparently was spreading tales of warning about Tessico and offered protection to people who wanted it. So that's another option. And then I heard a story about a third person who was saving lives and, and stuff. Um, would, would, 
I mean, I, I, I can ask more about one of them, but that might take a little bit longer, since these are just stories from the, the spirits that are here and now. <laughs> this is so sad, Ned. Oh no. <laughs> Welcome <Yeah>. back. <laughs> well, I decided to stop working sometimes. I changed my mind actually. I'm not going to uh, pick up any sound. Um, okay. I, I mean, all are definite possibilities, I guess. I think the issue is especially now as we're getting closer to where the band is going to be interfering more with people considering um their presence around this wedding and the city there and everything um it's probably gonna have to take a back seat to that mm -hmm. because if i cut the oath right in front of where we're going to be encountering the band that gives them additional reason to target me and my friends so yeah. maybe maybe at least we could try and make contact with one of them i think it's definitely worth a shot because if you don't know you know where or how to get to them that shouldn't you know force your oath to do anything right i suppose Um, the first one you talked about. The one I wilder now forget which order I set them in. <laughs> um, like someone who is doing an oath with like more about like ideals than swearing an oath to like a particular person. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So, ideology over uh, a guy of some kind. Mm -hmm. Let me try and find that spirit again. We can maybe ask some more details. Char, please. <laughs> Sorry, just a second. Cartoon cat noises in the background. <laughs> he knocked over my dishes from dinner. <laughs> Please, yep, little guy. Right. Uh, uh, but he strums again, and you kind of see that shift of light around him. But it seems to only be one this time. And you get the impression of somebody pulling close to speak to Quail. Uh, and they seem to be speaking with him. And you can almost make out the words, and you're focusing so hard on the words that you don't initially notice that something is almost taking form in this slowly growing misty form. Nobody else seems to react to it, just the two of you. But this spirit shows you both a tall figure with flowing robes of pale color, uh, short hair, uh, who is accepting an oath from somebody who is kneeling down, and they seem to gesture for this person to stand up, and you can't make out what they're saying, but their skin is very, very light, and these robes kind of shift and blow around them and it's almost like in this memory that the spirit is sharing this being turns and almost meets your gaze with these orange gold eyes and just kind of holds it for a moment and then tilts their head and you get the immediate 
impression with this prickle of hair along your neck that somehow through this memory this being has noticed you and the spirit fades abruptly and quail kind of looks a bit startled that was weird I've never had a memory sure. react to me before yeah i that didn't seem normal um considering if we've just gotten the attention of some deathico of indeterminate everything i suppose i do think i might have gotten a, an idea about this person mhm mm um, the the spirit was telling me a little of what they heard of what, what the oath itself was, and I didn't, I didn't understand everything, but I do know that part of it had something to do with keeping the balance, um, apparently, of balancing the good and the bad and getting rid of those who would tilt the scale too far into bad. So that, that, that seems a promising, right? Somebody who doesn't work in such black and white and would let you make the call about what's good and what's bad. Yeah. They seemed really focused on balance. I could see that. And I, I think I heard a name as well. Mm-hmm. I think... I think I heard the name Avail, and I will type this here. Okay, well... I suppose a name gives us something, Ben. Yeah, and I will actually... A second, just make sure. Ah, hello, please. There we go. Here we go. Uh, and here's kind of what you saw in in that little vision, if it would load. Well, you got art already made. Yeah. I made this a couple months ago. Oh, hell yeah. I feel like I've... I feel like you showed me at least part of this. Yeah, probably. Maybe. It looks vaguely familiar. But... Hell yeah. You. Yeah. But... Uh, Quail kind of... Sets this loop down. Well, it's something. I don't really know how to make contact with this person since the spirit didn't know, but I guess if they realized we were watching, that's... M maybe they'll reach out. Maybe they're chill. You know? Hopefully they're not upset about being watched or whatever. It's, it's on them for looking back, I suppose. <laughs> I guess so. Uh, but... So the wedding, are you gonna dress up for that and stuff? Or are you gonna do formal armor or like a dress or... What do you think? I'm... I guess between a couple ideas, this isn't really something I've had a lot of experience in dressing for. Um, I haven't exactly been to a lot of formal events, so... I mean, there's always, like, the dresses and that kind of thing, but I could also do, like, 
I feel like like a suit kind of deal would be good too. Um, I I'm not really sure considering um, like I said, this is kind of a new thing for me. Oh, I get you. Well, I'm sure once we get there, you can try out a bunch of different things. Uh, since apparently my grandmother, ugh, weird to say, is paying for it all. Yeah. How's that going for you? Finding out um, that kind of connection? Well, um, I'm not really sure what to think. Uh, I apparently have all this family I never knew about. Like, I, I know I have family somewhere, but you know, never thought I would meet them, but I don't know. It's... How about that? Yeah. I heard you talking with Nemesis before. Yeah. Because you were talking less than five feet away from me <laughs> um, while I was driving. So, yeah, my bad, I guess. But No, no, no. I don't know. Like, I mean, like you heard, Nemesis and I talked a little bit about it, but... I... I mean, I've, I've mentioned before, I have a pair of spirits that usually stick close by me. And they seem... One of them is excited for me to be going. I I can't really speak with them, so I can really just go off of, you know, feelings, but one of them seems excited. The other one, the one that I'm pretty sure is my mother, she seems scared. She doesn't want me to go there. And I don't know why. So, you know, a bit nerve wracking. Yeah, that doesn't bode too well. Yeah, it doesn't. But. I guess we'll find out, huh? That's, I guess, the best we can do at this point. Um, I can... I mean, hey, if all else fails, we can just throw out that you're associated with me, who's a member of the Thorn Band, and we'll probably get kicked out anyways, so... <laughs> Is that our feel-safe plan, get kicked out? I think it works, considering. We may as well use that to our benefit for once. I don't know, it's apparently the place with all this history and complicated family shit. And I kind of find places like that can be a little overwhelming when it comes to ghosts and spirits and stuff, so. Who knows, maybe I'll just hide in our room the whole time. We are. Or, un unless you share with Nemesis, of course. Or, I, I don't know, will Nemesis be staying with his family? I don't know. Yeah, what any of the arrangements there are going to be like. But I'm more than happy to share a room with you. Thanks. Odds are it's quiet, so... I mean, from what we were told, it seems like it's going to be a fancy wedding. With a lot of guests, so... Hey, you know, if you need a break, or if I need a break, we'll just say 
we're taking a, not a smoke break, but a song break. We'll go somewhere and I'll play music for us. And if anyone asks, you're critiquing my music. And that's why we need to be it's alone great. in the quiet. Sound, yeah, it sounds good. And if we really need a break, we tell everyone I'm from the Thorn Band and they kick <laughs> us out. And then we just, I don't know, hang outside the city for a week or whatever. I feel like that's a bit more than a break, but yeah. It's, yeah, that's worst case scenario, I think. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe you can help smooth things over with the Thorn Band, even. I don't think I have enough sway with them by any means to do anything. Besides, I don't even know the situation. I mean, I doubt the person that they're trying to go after actually probably did anything, but I can't say I know the nature of anything on that end. Yeah, if it's this big thorn band thing and you haven't like gotten one of your head messages about it, I wonder what's up with that. All the messages I've been getting have basically been things are bad. <laughs> with no like, specification as to what exactly is going bad. But I'm going to assume there's a good chance it's not that one person. They're trying to go after this one person, so... Hopefully not. Maybe it'll be a cool story. We'll have to see. Or we don't, considering we're also looking at changing up the whole oath thing. <laughs> True. If I'm planning on doing that, it's probably not a great idea to be spending time, a bunch of time around the band. <laughs> but, and besides, like I said, with our current company, it may not be the best idea to be having them ask too many questions as to what I've been doing <laughs> for the past several months. And considering uh, one of the biggest fugitives that they've been looking for is basically staying right next to the town that we have been helping build, that I have known about since she got there. Yeah. So. But hey, your your oath hasn't forced you to do anything about that, so I think that's a that's a pass. Yeah. For now, is. The major issue with that. <laughs> well, hopefully, we'll know soon, more soon. We're really close to getting to the city in like the next what, two or three days? And... Maybe you'll get answers on some things. Maybe I'll get answers on some things. Hopefully it's... We neither of us have problems with the answers to those things. Hopefully. Listen, we're pushing for best case scenario here. Of course. I mean, if I run into the Thorn Band, and you run away, and you run into your family that your mom specifically took you away from and doesn't want to go you to go back to well you know we'll see i suppose yeah <sighs> and unless there's anything else you wish to discuss You guys. Oh, I'm good. Yeah, you guys. You know, Quail resumes playing music, and you guys spend the evening once more taking in the atmosphere and just kind of remaining at the party, but distant from it in a way that it's not too much, but you still feel part of it. Hell yeah. Yeah. That is where we shall end it. Sounds good. <laughs>